Coming up on Broncos Weekend, Denver goes all in for win number nine as it heads to Sin City for the season finale. Getting to nine wins is important, and I think it's important for our players to understand that, and I think they do as well. What happens in Vegas doesn't always stay in Vegas. Jared Stidham is hoping to leave a lasting impression as he returns to face his former team. I've always been very confident in the kind of person and player that I am, but until you get out there and you're doing it against you know, the best guys in the world at, at their position, like, you just, you're just not out there, so you don't really know what you don't know. And in the bright lights of the desert, the defense hopes to shine against a tough rushing attack. We have to end the season the right way. We got to focus on what we can control, and uh, that's our record. We go one-on-one -on -one with Jaleel McLaughlin and offer some bold predictions. That's next on Broncos Weekend. Hello and thank you for joining us here on Broncos Weekend. I am Phil Milani alongside the Hall of Famer, Steve Atwater and Super Bowl 50 champ, Ryan Harris. Don't adjust your TV sets. That is the color of Steve's It's a jacket. little bright, but <laughs> hey, we're going to roll with it. I it's love Raiders it. week. we got to bring out all the big guns. The Ring of Fame jacket is out. Uh, and our main story this week is what's on the line for this Broncos team? What's the motivation as they head to Las Vegas? Well, I think the guys, man, they're, they're, they're playing for everything. They're, they're playing for pride. They're playing for respect. They're playing for their teammates. They're, they're playing for everything. They're playing for other teams because other guys, other teams are watching to see what these guys are going to do. Are they going to – Fold the fold their ten, or they're going to come out and play like champions. And I think they're going to come out and play like champs. You have to beat the Raiders. This is a real rivalry. This is something that means something to the players on this roster, and even the young players. They've experienced the Raiders beating them at times where it's really affected the season. So this is a huge division game. You have to set the tone, and it is going to be a challenge. This Raiders defense is fantastic. They got playmakers. Max Crosby is going to be playing mind games. He calls everybody a little boy on the field. <laughs> so you got to be mentally tough and know that you're going in for a brutal fight regardless of the records. This is your division. You better own it. What, what about a winning record? This is the first time the Broncos can finish with a winning record since 2016. Steve, is that a big deal? I definitely think it's a big deal. And some people don't feel like uh, team can have momentum from one year and it carry over to the next but I'm a believer that it does how you finish the previous season is kind of how you're going to come out and start the next season so I think it's extremely important and I'll tell you something when you have a winning record you finish the season like that it changes what you do in the off season. if you have a losing record you're going back to fix things if you have a winning record you're saying okay we know this I'm going to add this to my game so having a winning record is huge for the yeah. Broncos and making sure that their players are focused on growth over the, the offseason versus fixing mistakes. It's huge. Yeah. I also think so that, you know, with, with, with free agents, other people who will potentially be playing for the Broncos next year, they, they want to come to teams that have a winning record. So that could sway some, some players from – either wanting to come here or not wanting to come here. And I think this season has been a lot about changing the culture around here. And I think it's important that you can prove that, hey, that five-game winning streak wasn't just a fluke. Yeah. You know, hey, yeah. this this team's for real. They've turned the page. And uh, they hope to uh, prove that again uh, coming up on Sunday against the Las Vegas Raiders. Sean Payton talks about his message to the team. You know, there, there's a ton of these peaks and valleys during any NFL season. I mean, when you look at a team like Philadelphia, it, it's just – it just comes with everyone. And uh, certainly we, we had our fair share, but I think, uh, you know, finishing strong is important. And what we're watching for this week is Jared Stidham making his second start here. Steve, how can he build off of what he was able to do last week? Well, I think this game he'll come out with a little less jitters than he had this previous game. A lot of pressure on him last week, and I think he'll be settled in a little bit more, throw a little bit more accurate passes. Um, and, but he, I thought he did a nice job of, of stepping up into the pocket, keeping plays alive, uh, not drifting too much, and making it difficult for the offensive lineman. And uh, he, he threw some good passes. And uh, the offense, uh, they did a decent job last week. I think you're going to see him hit some of those mid-range shots that were just a bit outside last week. And 
I was really impressed with his completion percentage over 60%. That toss to little Jordan Humphrey that turned into a touchdown, that was fantastic. He's seeing the field. Those are the kinds of things you look for. So he just has to continue to grow in that comfort. And what I love is he said, this isn't me auditioning for the starting role. I'm working on winning and helping my team as an individual. So he's got the right mindset. He's willing to work. And, and whenever you're willing to work in the NFL, typically that produces great results in the game. Ryan, do you buy that, though? I mean, this is a chance for him to go show what he can do. He wants to be a starting quarterback in this league. It, it kind of is an audition in a way, right? Well, you're always auditioning in the NFL. And, and as a player, you can't think about, oh, this is my audition. You have to think about, I, ha I can play. And that's one of the things that Jared Stidham said. He said, it's hard to believe you can play when you're on the bench, but I know that now. So that's where he's operating from, and, and I do buy that. I've been there as a player. Steve's been there as a player. You go through meetings. You think, I can do it. I can do it. You, it happens in a game. It happens so fast you're not even thinking about it, and all of a sudden it turns into, oh, I, I am the person who can do it. I am the pro that I want to be. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, to, to think about, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm auditioning for a job, that's a lot to think about. The best way to approach it is, hey, man, I'm, this is just like practice. I'm going to go out here and play one play, play at a time. I'm going to act like the guys on the other side of the field. They're the guys that I go against in practice. And I'm just going to execute one play at a time. And uh, But, yeah, 100%. He's always auditioning. Everybody's always auditioning yes. when you're on that field. Yeah, it, it, that's uh, life in the NFL, I guess. I, everybody's always coming for your job. Here's what uh, Jared Stidham had to say earlier this week on what he hopes to improve, making his second start here in Denver. Obviously, it was good to go out there, get the win last week, and um, you know build off of that going into this last game of the season. So, I'm um, just trying to you know clean up these last few little things we have this week and, and go out there on Sunday and hopefully get a win. These are two vastly different teams than the teams that squared off in Week One, but one of the consistent players has been Raiders pass rusher Max Crosby. He had a, a sack in that first week matchup, and he's going to be a troublemaker once again on Sunday. For more, here's Denver 7's Troy Rank with our matchup of the game. The Broncos' season comes to a close on Sunday. No playoff berth, but still plenty to play for for this team. They want to achieve a winning record. It would be their first since 2016. Of course that matters. It matters to Sean Payton. It matters to this group. But for it to happen, they are going to have to control Mad Max Crosby. You see him on the screen. He has been riding a diary of havoc again this year, and he plays his best football against the Broncos. Garrett Bowles will be in charge mainly of keeping him under control. So why is Crosby so good against them? He is relentless against the Broncos. 8-1 record, 12 and a half sacks. He's a pro bowler against most teams. He is first ballot Hall of Famer against Denver. What makes Crosby different? The interesting thing about him, if you watch the film, his third snap, his 60th snap, all look the same. He's an energizer bunny. He never gives up on the play. He is a factor in the run game and the pass game because of his pursuit. So when you watch the Broncos, if Mike McGlinchey can't go, Cam Fleming on that side, Bulls on the other, keep an eye on where Crosby moves around and how they double team and shift to him, and you have to be on point. If you are going to have a winning season, Broncos, you've got to win the battles with Max Crosby. Thank you very much, Troy. It's time for us to take a quick break. When we come back, we go inside the locker room with Jaleel McLaughlin, and we highlight some young players who might play bigger roles for the Broncos next season. That's next on Broncos Weekend. Be relentless. Outside, outside, Lloyd, outside, Lloyd! <laughs> Our memorable matchup this week is from 1972. The Broncos beat the Raiders for the first time in 10 years. Talk about snapping a streak there. 30 to 23, the final that day in Oakland. Hall of Famer Floyd Little caught a touchdown pass and also threw a touchdown in that game. And our key stat this week, taking a look at the Broncos' pro bowlers, PS2 picking up back-to-back -back selections. Justin Simmons also getting his second selection as well. And the newcomer, Marvin Mims Jr., the fifth Broncos rookie to be selected. And you might be wondering, what's the most pro bowlers the Broncos have ever had in a season? That'd be 10 in 1998, including the man, 
to my right. Mm -hmm. We're back here on Broncos Weekend Film Milani alongside Steve Atwater and Ryan Harris. Uh, Steve, what do you remember about your Pro Bowl uh, selections? Uh, that's a special time. Yeah, de definitely special, but it, it's even more special once you've gone to the Super Bowl and taken care of your business. Um, you know, and that, so that was kind of like the cherry on top for us that year, uh, knowing that we had also won the Super Bowl. Um, but if you don't win the Super Bowl, it's kind of a nice second place thing, you know, nice little trip and all that. Well, it was back then. Yeah, it yeah. Was in Hawaii at the Different time. This time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Broncos, uh, three Pro Bowlers, a couple of alternates. Uh, seems about right for this team, huh? Yeah, I mean, I was surprised Cortland Sutton did at least get, you know, a, a, a nomination there to be in there, but I understand. I, I think it's great for Justin Simmons. I mean, he became a pro bowler with some injuries this year. That tells you how dominant he is. He's played fantastic all year. And then Patrick Sertan, one of the best corners in the league. So you get those pieces on defense that guys can look to. This is how I need to go about my business. This is how I need to perform, prepare. This is what it sounds like on the field. So fortunately for the Broncos, they've got some great young talent that are still getting acknowledged league-wide. And Marvin Mims getting acknowledged yes. for, yeah, as, a as, as a punt returner, kick yeah. returner. He's done an amazing job, had a touchdown, uh, been consistent every game, too. Yeah. And Steve, you tell us about it, but a lot of times players, you get around those other greats, you learn some things that you can bring back to the game. And that yeah, happens. Yeah. You, you learn things, you get a chance to interact with some players that – you know, you finally get a chance to meet these guys and see what how they operate. And uh, I think it makes you a better player, a better leader. Yeah. Look out for Marvin Mims. I mean, oh, rookie yeah. going in and yeah. then all of a sudden he's oh, yeah. going to learn from some of the best. All right. You'd be like a sponge to soak it all in uh, that yes. week uh, in Orlando there. Okay, guys, let's get some uh, bold predictions. Steve, let's start with you. Judy, 100-yard game. I, we, we said it last week. I think this week he's going to he's going to break out. He, he got close last week, uh, and also Jared Stidham. I'm going to say 250, 275 yards passing. Offensive line has to do a great job, and I think we got to get the run game going as well. Yeah, I like Javante Williams getting 100 yards rushing. I thought he was fantastic, even though he didn't cross that 100-yard mark. He ran with authority. He ran with decision-making. He made the decision to be great. And then you've got, of course, Jaleel McLaughlin. So I think yes. we got two rushing touchdowns, one from each of the running backs. And I just love what they've been able to do production-wise for the Broncos this year. Uh, you mentioned Jaleel McLaughlin. Not a pro bowler, but he certainly left his mark as an undrafted rookie coming in. He's with Sidney Jones inside the Broncos locker room presented by Colorado State University. Find your energy. Thanks, Phil. We're inside the locker room here with running back Jaleel McLaughlin. Jaleel, final week of the season here. What's just the mindset? What's the focus here in the locker room at practice this week? You know, just focus on becoming 9 and 8. You know, working hard and, you know, leaving everything out there in this last game. Um, it sucks that we're, you know, not able to go to playoffs, but um, just leaving everything out there this last game and, uh, bring you know, bring a win back here. Jaleel, your rookie season has come to a close here. Can you even believe it? it went by so fast. I can't believe it. You know, it went by so fast. And, you know, just like you said, so, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough moment for me. But, you know, I'm excited for more. Excited for more opportunity. Excited for more, uh, you know, to get back here uh, next year. And, you know, I'll, it's a blessing. Jaleel, when you look back at the year, how do you feel like or where do you feel like your game just grew the most this season? Um, you know, I think just learning more and more. You know, I think just getting smarter with the game. Um, I think and, and also patience. You know, I think that's where my game has grown. Um, and I'm going to keep uh, doing that. Yeah. Julia, I know earlier this week, head coach Sean Payton said that you've expressed interest in expanding your role as a receiver, kind of talked about that joker position. You know, what have those conversations been like for you? And is that how you hope to see your role expand next season? Yeah, you know, it's, it's unbelievable to go out there, you know, and, and learn from, you know, Coach Payton. You know, he's teaching me things that, you know, I never even heard of, you know, in my, all of my years of playing football. So I think that, you know, my role, you know, at receiver, hopefully it continue to, you know, grow. And I'm going to keep working as hard as I can um, for, uh, to do that because I think that, you know, that could be a special piece, uh, piece to this team. Can you talk about some of the other guys in the running back room? I mean, Samaj P. Ryan, Javante Williams, how much have they helped you this year? And, you know, how have they just given you advice and seen you grow? They helped me tremendously. Uh, that's, you know, that's what I'm, you know, sad about, you know, not being able to see those guys for, for a couple of months. You know, I think that um, those guys took me in as a brother. Um, and I can't talk, uh, you know, enough about how, how great people they are. Um, great football players as well, but great people. Um, someone you could definitely, uh, people that you could definitely look up to. Um, and Samaj, Javante, uh, Piran, you know, the D Wash and even uh, Tyler Batty, I think that, you know, that's what I'm, you know, gonna miss the most. Jill, when we look at the season finale in Las Vegas, you know, how important is it to get this final win of the season, to finish the season strong, but also to finish with a winning record as well? Oh, it's very important. That's our main focus. You know, we're going to uh, go in there, you know, you know, with the mindset of we want to win, you know, and I hope that that uh, will show on film. Jill, appreciate your time. Thank you. Phil, I'll send it back to you. 
Thank you very much, Sydney. Uh, let's talk about some of the young guys the Broncos have here. Uh, Jaleel McLaughlin, obviously a big piece, but there's some other guys, Ryan, that are going to be big pieces moving forward. Yeah, I think Nick Benito is a huge piece at defensive end. Love what he's been able to do. Jonathan Cooper as well. That's been fantastic. Brandon Johnson on offense at receiver. I think he really is, is a threat. Kind of reminds me of a Tim Patrick type of player a few years ago. But I'll tell you something. Drew Sanders has been growing this last year. Made that big tackle on the fake punt. That's another player. So you've got a young core that's growing. you got a young Riley Moss who's waiting to get after it as well on defense. Yeah, Riley Moss, Drew Sanders, uh, Nick Benito, Jay Coop, just all the guys that yeah. you, you mentioned. Uh, they, they have a lot of potential. Uh, they're young players. They're still impressionable. Uh, you see the talent. You see the effort that they're putting in. And I think just with, with a little bit more time, they're going to develop into uh, really great players. And uh, who knows, the, 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 there, there may be several pro bowlers in this group uh, in the future. Yeah, yeah I, I thought Alex Singleton should have been a pro bowler this year. But the other thing, too, young players playing well, like, like the Broncos have, they're on low dollar contracts, so this is a really important yeah. thing, and it's going to be important going into the offseason. Yeah, I was going to say the good teams in this league, they draft well, they find these guys, yeah. they, they develop them, and then they become key contributors. And uh, the Broncos certainly have a, a, a few guys uh, on this roster right now. Uh, it's time for us to take our final break here on Broncos Weekend. When we return, we look back at some of Denver's top fantasy performers this season, and we also have our keys to victory. That's next on Broncos Weekend. Uh, just to go out on a high note. Uh, and have a, a winning season. It hasn't, hasn't been done here in a while. I know we didn't. We came short of the goal of making it to the playoffs, but you know, this this is what we have to fight for now, and that's you know, a, a big deal to us. To finishing nine and eight. You got to approach this week as a professional and do everything that you can to, you know, get your your yourself in a place where you can go compete and compete freely, and uh, and go get our ninth win because it's it's incredibly important to us. It's a huge honor to be recognized as such around the league by my peers and even the fans um, just voting me in, you know, just thinking I'm, you know, that caliber of a player. So um, it means a lot in general. It will be cool going this time and, and kind of seeing, um, you know, different guys around the league that that are heck of players. And, um, you know, you get to break bread with them over the next couple of days, enjoy some family time. And, um, you know, nice that it's back in Orlando, uh, you know, hometown-ish for me. So, so it's a great honor. Um, Huge testament to my teammates and the special teams units. I mean, they gave me great, great looks all season. And, um, you know, we kind of led the league in both return um, averages and um, ended up working out great. So um, just to be able to be recognized as a pro bowler for this conference and then just representing our special teams unit, it's a huge honor. The Broncos pro bowlers certainly looking forward to spending some time in Orlando in a couple of weeks. Like we mentioned earlier in the show, getting to rub elbows with some of the best in the NFL. Sydney Jones looks back at some of our best fantasy performers this season in our final fantasy focus. Thanks, Phil. Like you mentioned, with the season coming to a close for the Broncos this weekend, I thought it'd be fun to take a look at some of the top performers for the Broncos in fantasy football this season. Starting with running back Javante Williams, he put up 21 fantasy points in PPR leagues back in Week 10 versus Buffalo Bills, in which he finished that game with 21 carries for 79 yards and four receptions for 31 yards and a touchdown. Next on the list is wide receiver Marvin Mims Jr. Back in Week 2 versus the Washington Commanders, he had two receptions for 113 yards and one touchdown plus two carries for 10 yards resulting in 20.3 fantasy points. Now wide receiver Cortland Sutton, he produced 19.6 fantasy points back in week seven versus the Packers. He finished that game with six receptions for 76 yards and one touchdown. And last but certainly not least, in the Broncos' week four matchup versus the Bears in Chicago, running back Jaleel McLaughlin put up 19.4 fantasy points with seven carries for 72 yards and three receptions for 32 yards and a touchdown. It's been a fun season of fantasy football with you all. That's going to do it for this year's final fantasy focus. Phil, I'll send it back to you. Thank you very much, uh, Sydney. Uh, I think that when you look at some of the top players on this team, Corlin Sutton certainly sticks out. Ten touchdowns this season. Not quite good enough, though, to be a pro bowler. Yeah, 770 yards. I think most of the wide receivers, they have, you know, close to 1,000 or over 1,000 yards uh, receiving. But he's a clutch player. Uh, he's come through for this team time and time again uh, when we've needed it. Uh, circus catches, uh, you know, catches in clutch situations. And he goes out and blocks just as hard as he uh, runs those routes. So uh, he's a great receiver. I think he has a great future here. 
and I hope he continues to, to develop and, and be the great player that he is. And I think two things you saw from Cortland Sutton, he got those 10 touchdowns this year already, has an opportunity for more while being the number one threat. It's one thing to sneak up on people and get 10 touchdowns, another thing to snag 10 away from a defense that's trying to take it away from you. And then what Steve said, his ability outside of catching the football to block. I mean, you saw Jerry Judy throw a block for little Jordan Humphrey on that touchdown. Yeah. It's because he's been seeing Cortland Sutton do that. That's the kind of effect Cortland Sutton can have on your team as a player. Yeah, a great leader in that wide receiver room and uh, nice to see him get back to that 2019 form when he was a pro bowler. Uh, he looked like himself again and uh, nice to see after his injury a couple of years ago. Okay, uh, time to wrap things up here. Let's talk about our keys to victory. Ryan, let's start with you. Number one, stop Max Crosby. Number two, stop the run game. You do those two things, you get to get the victory against the Raiders on the road for the first time since we were playing Super Bowl 50 season. And final thoughts as well. I want to say thank you to Aaron Gunning, Austin Brinks, Reed Conant, and Mike Genova for taking care of us. That's our production crew on the back end here. Yeah, we appreciate you guys big time. Making us look good uh, for sure all season long. Uh, Steve, uh, keys to victory here. Yeah, Zamir White, uh, he's a running back who stepped in for Josh Jacobs. We got to stop him. He's going to come out. They're going to try to establish the run game. We know we're gonna, they're going to come out and try to be physical with us. We got to match that same intensity, be just as physical with them. Also, Jacoby Myers. We got to make sure that uh, we keep him under 100 yards. We know he's going to be a target for them. The last game, they went away uh, from uh, the man, Devontae Adams, and they focused on him. We got to make sure that we shut him down as well. Yeah, this is a totally new Raiders team since Antonio Pierce took over. They have the number one scoring defense in the league since he took over, and that offense has uh, plenty of playmakers. So a good test for the Broncos, looking to have their first winning season since 2016. All right, that's going to do it for us. Our thanks to Troy Rank and Sidney Jones and us here at the desk. My man, Super Bowl 50 champ Ryan Harris and the Hall of Famer, Ring of Famer, the orange jacket wearer. We love him, Mr. Steve Atwater. And for the man, Phil oh, Milani. Thank you very Phil much. G. Phil Milani. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Phil Milani. Thank you so much for watching Broncos Weekend.